You may be familiar with the quote, success always leaves a footprint. And if you're a careful student of successful practices, you may have noted that successful people leave footprints and some of these footprints may help you on your journey towards success. So on this show, we continue to speak to successful, accomplished women as we seek to identify their footprint and learn from them. My name is Christina Mira and I am the host for the show. Join me today as I interact with a woman who seeks to challenge fellow women to continue negotiating for their rights. She is actually the first diploma that we have hosted on the show. Welcome to the show, Anam Tavati, the Country Director, UN Women Kenya. Welcome so much to the show. Mm. Welcome. Uh, you know, it's a pleasure to have you here to inspire, mm. encourage, and just be a, a woman um, mentor, you know, uh, today. Mm -hmm. And I guess we'll just start by, from your position now, you're in the UN, uh, UN Women Country Director. Mm -hmm. Such a huge position. Such a huge position. Uh, but I want us to go backwards to how it all began. Your story and your life journey, the things you've learned along the sure, way. Sure. Um, I don't know, where did you grow up? I can tell from your accent that I, I sound Kenyan, but you're from Africa <laughs> <laughs> with a different accent. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay, thank mm -hmm. you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm Zimbabwean. Mm -hmm. I was born in a little town in Zimbabwe. Uh, it's 90 kilometers northeast of Harare, so that's mm -hmm. where I grew up. Mm -hmm. It was a small, it still is there, it's a small mining um, town, uh, it's called Bindura. Oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so that's where I was born so mm -hmm. many years ago. Yeah? Yes, I was born in a family of five children, mm -hmm. so I'm uh, the third born in that family. Mm -hmm. I was born to semi-literate parents mm -hmm. so my my mother didn't have more than two years of education so and my dad just mm -hmm. said slightly more than that three years mm -hmm. so and the, they, they didn't have an education themselves but they instilled the value of education in all their children and they kept saying you know we don't have education ourselves but um, where are we going if you don't have an education, you'll be nobody. So that really sank and sank so well Deep, yeah. with me, yeah? Uh, <laughs> yeah? And that was my mantra, just going up. So they, they really mm -hmm. inspired me mm -hmm. to, and my siblings as well. Yeah. Um, it was a very poor um, community mm -hmm. because it was mainly made up of immigrants and we were immigrants also. My, my dad came from Zambia as a small boy. Mm -hmm. My mother came from Malawi also oh, as a small girl. Okay, okay. And there was that time that mm -hmm. um, Zimbabwe, Zambia, Malawi, we, we were in a federation. So that's the time that they'd migrated to Zimbabwe. And they just settled there in that mining, um, well, they met each other and they settled in that mining compound, mm -hmm. well, that mining community, very, very poor. Mm -hmm. um, we lacked so many basics growing up. I'll tell you about the story, but uh, let me <laughs> bounce back to you. Yeah. Okay, mm. uh, so what did you study? You said education became your mantra. Mm. You have to just study, study, study. Mm. How far did you go in pursuing your education? Okay, so that journey, if I may take you two steps back, that journey started um, in that small little mining um, community that I grew up in. Uh, so it only had a very small school that went up to grade two. So that's two years in primary. After that, we had to go seven kilometers one way to the next nearest school and then seven kilometers back. So at the tender age of 
nine, ten. Mm -hmm. I was already trekking seven kilometers to wow. school on foot oh. and seven kilometers oh. coming oh. back. So 14 kilometers. Yeah. Uh, that's where it started from. Um, we had a bus, a school bus for all the children that were in that training community. But it was more, um, on more days than, um, uh, on more days it was broken down. So we would walk we'll all, the walk all the time to school, yeah, yeah, and then back. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, but it didn't deter me. <laughs> I just knew <laughs> that it had to count for something. So mm -hmm. it kind of drove me to then make the most out of it. I didn't know what that was mm -hmm. as a small child, what that mm -hmm. better was, but I knew yeah. just that mm -hmm. it had to be it different. Be better. Yes, okay. yes, yes. So um, mm -hmm. I, I went on to uh, graduate from law school mm -hmm. uh, at University of Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. And then I spent another six years working mm -hmm. with the Zimbabwe Women Lawyers Association, wow. um, okay. doing public legal aid and uh, legal literacy for women mm -hmm. and um, also advocacy for law reform around family laws. And then I went back to school to study women's law as a master's degree. Wow. So you see where my passion has always been, <laughs> yeah. but I'm sure I'll we'll get to that. We'll get so to that, I do yeah. hold a degree mm -hmm. of law, mm -hmm. um, but uh, sorry, an honors degree in law mm -hmm. and then a master's degree in women's law. Wow, wow, yes. wow, wow. Mm -hmm. I just have to ask this, mm -hmm. are yes. your parents there have they seen the success that you've actually achieved this far and the mantra that you held you know education yes, is the key yes you know? yes yes so unfortunately my mother died before she could see you know the fruits of her labor mm. um she died when i just uh received my first degree mm -hmm. so i'm sure that wherever she is she's mm -hmm. looking down mm -hmm. um and proud of the you know woman that i've become uh, my dad is still alive. Yeah. He's so proud of me. <laughs> so I can uh, yes, he's yeah. so proud of me. So mm. all the time he brags to mm. his drinking mates in the village <laughs> about his daughter. Well, yeah. He says the daughter, my daughter, my solo <laughs> star. You know, Zimbabwe? So yes, he's okay. still in Zimbabwe. Yes. So he lives in the village now, he's retired. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, he's very proud of, um, mm -hmm. of, of my achievements and also of my siblings. Oh, okay. Yes. So mm. I'm curious, why mm. women empowerment? And you started so young, mm. you know? Why mm. women empowerment? Mm. Yeah. So I think it, it all goes back again to my upbringing, to mm -hmm. where I grew up. Because in that uh, mining community, I, ex I saw mm -hmm. and experienced a lot of uh, domestic violence. Mm -hmm. So it was almost like a given mm -hmm. that husbands would beat up their wives and then walk away scot-free. Right, mm -hmm. and no police would intervene, mm -hmm. and nothing would happen to them. So it just grew mm -hmm. up in me a sense that something had to be done. Um, I witnessed it that just the social tolerance, you know, with which it was almost like a given, mm -hmm. um, a point of life that that's how life is going to be, uh -huh. you know. So um, I made a part with myself that what I was seeing, mm -hmm. you know, women being beaten, abused at the hands of their spouses, mm -hmm. and they would stay on because of the children, or maybe because they just didn't have anywhere to go themselves. Mm -hmm. You know, so they depended on their very abusers yeah. for for everything, right? So um, it, it, it didn't sit well in my spirit. Mm -hmm. So I made a part that if I were ever to get married, no one would lay a finger on me mm -hmm. the way I'd seen it. Okay. And also that I had to Okay, so they said I was very intelligent growing up, so I said, how can I use that so that, you know, what I'm experiencing right now and mm -hmm. seeing all around me mm -hmm. does not become what I continue to experience in my grown uh, experience, but also witness in other people in mm -hmm. my grown-up life. Yeah. yeah, so I always knew from a very tender age that I wanted to be a policewoman to arrest <laughs> them. <laughs> the, 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 the men whom I saw, you know, uh, yeah. beating up violence, uh, uh, so much violence perpetrated on their wives yeah. and their children. So I knew I wanted to be in a law enforcement. Did you law start pursuing, uh, you know? So from a tender age, I wanted to be a policewoman. Then wow. I, I, I okay. kind of, you know, uh, mm -hmm. fine tuned that uh, vision. <laughs> that vision. Yeah. So, yeah. but it stay, still stayed still within stay uh, law enforcement. Okay. And so, as I grew up, then I knew, mm -hmm. okay, I can still do this, but as a but lawyer, I don't lawyer. have to be a policewoman. Yes. So I just, you know, perfected that dream a bit more, and then I 
worked towards it. Yeah. I started, I knew what courses I wanted to do. Yeah. And I knew, you know, the grades that I must get, that wasn't an wow. issue of the grades. <sighs> and just growing up, you know, um, I always wanted to make my mother very proud. I remember um, teaching her how to read. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was in grade five. Mm -hmm. I remember that very well. And she really liked to read the Bible. Mm -hmm. So she had this Bible with very big letters. Mm -hmm. And so I would sit next to her. <laughs> and then she would be following the letters like this. And then I would be teaching her. <laughs> I mean, it's so, you I know, mess me tear up a bit. Yeah. But um, uh -huh. so I always wanted to make my mother very proud of me. Mm -hmm. So in terms of the grades, there was no issue there. Mm -hmm. I knew I would get the grades, mm -hmm. right? And um, I think that's also this, the, the time that my mother lived for uh, because every day else she was a nobody but when it came to you know prize giving ceremonies she knew <laughs> my daughter she will make me proud <laughs> oh how lovely i yeah. guess those are the most fond memories you have growing yes, up yeah? yes you yes, and your yes, mother yes, 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 <laughs> yes, but yes. i believe that then you are also then that you are also just focused since you were young you know you know what you want yes. you're the prefect i guess yes, yes. the head girl also yes, 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 the yes. wow <laughs> you wear all the hats <laughs> yes yes so if in law school i knew what I wanted to study. Okay. So of course, mm -hmm. there were some compulsory courses which I did mm -hmm. um, around criminal law, around contract law. But mm -hmm. where I came alive the most when we when we were discussing family law, mm -hmm. marriage law, yeah. divorce law, mm -hmm. inheritance law, violence against women, mm -hmm. all of those to do with um, uh, family relationships and yeah. so on. Yeah, that's when I was really thrived. Yeah, yeah. Exactly, yeah. Exactly. because you have seen it and you, yes. you wanted to make yes. a change. Yes, and that's, I okay. knew exactly where I wanted to go. So mm -hmm. on graduation, I, I, I did try my luck at a law firm, thinking maybe, you know, I could mm -hmm. still specialize in that area. Mm -hmm. But then after three months, I realized it wasn't for me. So I went to volunteer mm -hmm. with the Zimbabwe Women Lawyers Association. Okay. Yes. And there I just knew that's exactly that's where I wanted to be. Because to these were okay. uh, poor women who couldn't mm -hmm. afford the services of a lawyer. Uh -huh. And so they would go there with exactly what I'd experienced and witnessed growing up. Yeah, right. Yeah. So then, then it became my opportunity okay. to contribute help women that mm. I couldn't help as a young girl. Mm. Yes. So I, I did six years of uh, defending women in court, you know, uh, helping them assert their rights, mm -hmm. uh, helping women get uh, peace orders from abusive relationships. Mm -hmm. Also, so that's like the Zimbabwe Lawyer Association is like the feeder. Of it's like Kenya. the feeder. Yes, okay, okay, I actually okay. had an opportunity. <laughs> I think um, mm -hmm. two years into working with Zwala, mm -hmm. uh, so Zwala is the Zimbabwe Women Lawyers, Lawyers Association. Association. So I was posted here yeah, to spend some time with your feeder here. Yeah. Yes, so we oh, really? an exchange program. And yes, so I also did my fair share yeah. of helping Kenyan women uh, okay. through legal aid. And it was very fulfilling just to also see mm -hmm. how the problems are almost the same. It's okay. almost like, oh, mm. if, I mean, Any all men are born from Africa. one woman. <laughs> <laughs> and the, the problems with the women are the same, are, are the same oh, everywhere. No. Yes, that's, that's yes. quite upsetting. Yes, yes. And then that, that means that was the beginning of your journey working out of home. How many countries have you worked in so far? Oh, several actually. Uh -huh. So um, I've devoted most of my professional uh, mm -hmm. uh, career in Zimbabwe, my home country. Mm -hmm. But then I also moved to northern Uganda at the time mm -hmm. that Northern Uganda was just coming out of that 20 year insurgency. Oh, okay. So I was posted okay. there with uh, the United Nations Population Fund um, because we were supporting uh, uh, the returnees, the uh, internally displaced uh, people who were in camps for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. And there they'd seen all the horrors mm -hmm. uh, from the Lord's Resistance Army and from yeah. the fighting groups, yeah. right? Yeah. So we were there. Mm -hmm. uh, to receive them as they were coming out of the camps mm -hmm. and just help their reintegration back home, mm -hmm. but also deal with so much trauma that they'd experienced. And so my, my role there was as a GBV program mm -hmm. coordinator, so gender based violence. Mm -hmm. So even though the war had stopped, the violence had not stopped. Oh, so okay. even as they were going back home after 20 years, there was even much more violence now mm -hmm. in the home setup, right? Mm -hmm. So we were helping to build the systems of justice, law, and order in post war mm -hmm. northern Uganda. Yeah. So I was there, um, and then I moved also to Kampala in a much more senior position, now overseeing 
a, an entire region mm -hmm. in terms of that kind of programming. Mm -hmm. Then I went back home. Mm -hmm. I worked uh, with, as an advisor for mm -hmm. gender and human rights with UNICEF. Okay. Also just ensuring that um, when we're looking at children, we pay attention to the specific challenges that mm -hmm. your child faces that is different from the boy child. Yeah. Yeah. So I was doing that a lot. Um, with UNICEF and then um, I went back to Uganda wow. uh, so it's, it's been 10 years <laughs> yeah. that I've spent in Uganda uh -huh. working with UNFPA and then with UN Women. Okay. Yeah, with UN Women I was uh, um, the deputy country representative for mm -hmm. UN Women mm -hmm. and head of programs so we got an opportunity to design programs on the mm -hmm. empowerment of women which yeah. we can talk about a bit more. Yeah. Um, I've also worked in South Africa wow, okay. um, with UN Women. Mm -hmm. I, I had an opportunity to work in Namibia mm -hmm. when I was still with the Zimbabwe Women Lawyers Association again mm -hmm. on an exchange program. Um, I've worked in uh, with our headquarters wow. in New York. Okay. Yes, okay. so with the headquarters of UNFPA <laughs> mm -hmm. and then also um, with uh, UN Women headquarters. Yeah. So a lot of uh, exposure lot that of I've, exposure. I've uh, yeah. A lot of exposure, mm. a lot of accolades. I'm actually learning from you that you can have a career from a cause. Like you can have a yes. cause, stick to it, and yes. just have a career also yes. around it. So you're passionate, yes. at the same time you're having a career. Yes, yes, which yes. Which is so important. Absolutely, yeah. and for me, I think mm -hmm. it made a huge difference. So mm -hmm. I don't just approach my job as a job. Mm -hmm. I approach it because I believe in it, mm -hmm. because I've lived that entire mandate mm -hmm. of working to protect the rights of women, give them a space to just be, right, and realize their full potential in life without the worries of violence, without the worries of poverty, without the worries of not having a voice, because I lived all of that. Okay. So, that's what drives me, yeah. you know, because my, my our mandate, okay. the mandate of gender equality and empowerment of women, I mm. lived through it. Lived through so it. I speak it, I have experienced it, I sleep it, <laughs> I think about it, it's everything. It's everything it defines what I do, yeah. right? Okay. Yeah, so it's not just a job mm -hmm. for me. It's, okay. um, it's an opportunity to actually change things that I saw okay. and experienced as, okay. as I was growing up. And with all this exposure and having a course and being so passionate, have you ever taken a risk in your career, honestly? <laughs> I have. Yeah. Um, I have. So it's, it has not always been uh, clearly cut. Um, there are times when, you know, you're not even sure um, what, uh, a, 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 what step to take or what move to make. make yeah. So I mentioned. I can imagine, to, like yeah. moving countries. Yes. And, you know, that's not easy. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So one of the things is actually about the career moves. So um, uh, when I left Uganda, I was fairly senior. Mm. Um, so the, the decision that I made mm. to go back home to take a, a national position. So when in the UN system, when you're working outside of your country, you're working there as an expatriate, right? Mm -hmm. So it mm -hmm. has a certain level that it brings. Mm -hmm. And then so taking a move back home, um, some would look at it like it was uh, going down in mm -hmm. terms of where I'd reached in, yeah, in, yeah, in, in the UN. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Okay. But I took that move anyway. Mm -hmm. um, it was informed by family decisions. You know, I, the, it was a time that I needed to be with my family mm -hmm. and also for health reasons. I needed to slow down a bit mm -hmm. and just focus on my, on my well-being, mm -hmm. uh, okay. both mental and physical. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, it was a risk because anybody who would be looking at my CV, they would say that was a career dip. Mm -hmm. And then to bounce back, yes, yeah. you know, it would take yeah, longer. Exactly. It most, yeah, exactly. Okay, just, but yeah. it was a risk I took. Mm -hmm. um, and it did well for me to mm -hmm. just go back, connect mm -hmm. with family, mm -hmm. connect with my friends, connect with my social structure. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just reposition myself again. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, after two years, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm ready. ready again. I respect yeah. that. I respect mm -hmm. that work-life balance. Mm -hmm. You trying to also maintain your mental health, physical sure. health and family. Because yes. it's, a, it's a belief out there that, well, as a woman, you can't have both. You can't have a career and also you still can't be able to maintain a family and be able to be okay with your 
immediate family, nuclear family, you know, there's a lot involved with that. So mm. I, I really respect that part that you decided to make a decision that, you know, you're trying to balance everything. Yes, yes, well, yes, yes. yes. I'm learning a lot from you. Well, thank you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you. I'm still learning from myself, by uh, the way. Yeah. I'm still learning from myself. Mm -hmm. uh, the missteps mm -hmm. that I take, I mm -hmm. learn from them. I don't regret them. Mm -hmm. I learn from them. Uh, but I also take every opportunity to learn from others as well. Mm -hmm. Because um, life never stops teaching, mm -hmm. right? So you That's just have true. to open yourself That's to true. learning to learn and continue to learn. Yeah, yeah. okay. Mm. Mine is opening myself to learning from women like you, ah. <laughs> basically. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. yes, yes. We learn from uh, each yeah, other. Yeah. I, I, I believe there is always a lesson. Mm -hmm. In every situation, there is a lesson. So we just need to open ourselves to learning. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. okay. And mm. how are you finding Kenya so far, by the way, as a country? <laughs> Before well, we get to the women issues in Kenya. <laughs> sure, sure. So I really love Kenya. Mm -hmm. It reminds me so much of home. Um, there's so many things that are similar oh. to Zimbabwe. Mm -hmm. So the people, um, <laughs> I think they are kind, they are warm, they are mm -hmm. welcoming. Mm -hmm. um, the food. Uh, is a lot like at home, okay. so except your girl is very yeah. hard. Adios is soft. <laughs> I have a Zimbabwean soft, friend, yeah. yeah, she yeah. makes the soft, yes, yeah. make it softer. So yeah. we always joke around here yeah, that this one here, mm. if somebody you know hits you with it, you wake up from the hospital, <laughs> you fall down, head in cash. <laughs> um, uh, and um. Even the way the city is laid out, mm. it's a lot like Harare. Okay. And um, we find our way quite mm. easily. It's just mm. been unfortunate that um, mm. uh, when we posted here, we didn't get much mm. time to really get to know the country as a whole because then we went, in, went into mm. lockdown. Mm. But um, as for, when, whenever it's safe to do so, we do explore the mm. country, the city. We love it a lot. Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm. Mm. So I, I, I believe then there are some women issues that you've seen. And of course, I've been part of a conversation that you are in, in gender-based violence, mm. and I know that's really I can't even imagine the mm. the rate at which you know, especially during COVID period, mm -hmm. there's a lot of gender-based violence. Yeah. I don't know which other issues you know you've noticed in regards to women mm. um, problems, mm. challenges mm. that they're going through in this country, mm. Mm. and mm. probably even how you're helping to address them. Sure. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad you picked up on the issue of uh, gender-based violence mm -hmm. and uh, I would not complete a discussion without talking about gender-based gender violence because you know how, I, how, you know how close heart, it is yeah. to my heart. Yes. Mm -hmm. So it is um, one of the issues, of course, that I have noted. But also I knew about even before I came to Kenya because you read up a lot on the country you're going to be posted in. Mm -hmm. So I read up about it a lot and um, so it is an issue of concern. I know you highlighted how it went up during COVID-19. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a key message we want to just highlight is that so we've always had uh, gender-based violence as a problem mm -hmm. in the country mm -hmm. and in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, but it did go up mm -hmm. uh, because some people want to then say it was because of COVID that GBV, mm -hmm. um, the issues of uh, gender-based violence mm -hmm. uh, became a concern. They've always, always been, been a concern, concern to us. Mm -hmm. We've always been talking about the need to change attitudes, mm -hmm. the need to change the social socialization that makes it okay for a man to beat up a wife or a spouse or a girlfriend or a partner and then walk away with mm -hmm. impunity. Mm -hmm. We've always problematized the normalization of violence in mm -hmm. all its forms, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I always mention that it's not enough to just talk of the physical violence. Mm -hmm. There is also the economic violence, right? Yeah. Where you fail to provide for your family, right? Mm -hmm. And you have the means to do so, mm -hmm. right? And also even, you know, uh, depriving your partner the right to work and make mm -hmm. a living, mm -hmm. right? So there are so many women you want to believe. It's important it. that you've highlighted that because yeah. gender-based violence is quite broad. Many, many people, forms. Yeah, yes. many, many forms yes. of it. Yes, yes, and yes, some yes. ladies might be experiencing it without knowing. Without knowing without that knowing it is gender-based violence. Yeah. So we always use opportunities like this, mm -hmm. not only to learn from uh, other women, but mm -hmm. also to learn from, you know, mm -hmm. what they are saying mm -hmm. about a particular situation you may be experiencing. So that's really very important to acknowledge that there is also economic violence. Some women, when they are in the workplace, they can't even function because the man comes in there to make all men of problems for them. So in the end, the employer just decides, hey, you know what, you are not the best person that we are looking for for this job. And then they terminate those contracts, right? 
Um, there is also the psychological violence. Mm -hmm. I think uh, in work language, we call it sometimes ga gaslighting. gaslighting. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. yes so yeah. you are name That's called, yeah. you are threatened, mm -hmm. you are made to feel less worthy, yeah. you know, so many things. So you even begin to believe mm -hmm. yourself that mm -hmm. you are stupid, you are worthless, mm -hmm. you are not good enough. Yeah, you are not uh, you are you Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, yes. Okay. So all of that. Mm -hmm. But there is also the sexual violence, which we mm -hmm. can't um mm. ignore very very rampant so the rape the defilement of young children and when you marry off a girl who is not yet of age of legal age who is not yet 18 mm. that's also a form of sexual violence because you are making them to go and perform sexual acts Act that they are not yeah. um um, um uh, they're too young, they're too young to mm. consent to yeah. yes um, mm -hmm. And then, of course, there are harmful practices. Mm -hmm. I think here in Kenya, it really stands out in, in the issues of uh, uh, female genital mutilation mm -hmm. and also other practices like um, disinheriting of widows mm -hmm. or forcing widows to be inherited so that they can enjoy what their late husbands uh, yeah. left behind, yeah. right? So all of those are forms of violence. So sorry that I took a bit no, of time it's important to explain for you to that. Do that. Yeah. <laughs> so that yes, because be again, aware. you know, this is mm. yeah what sits in here, <laughs> yeah. and we, we, every opportunity we get as mm -hmm. UN women to share and um, empower other women. Mm. So we, we we take that opportunity. So thank you for this opportunity. Mm. Um, but also the other issue we've seen in mm -hmm. Kenya is that the place where decisions are made somehow that place is not socialized to be a place where women mm -hmm. should be right yeah. mm -hmm. uh, i say this because uh, it has taken us a while in kenya mm -hmm. to really uh, catch up with the rest of the region and we haven't even caught up mm -hmm. with the rest of the region yeah. when it comes to women in politics and decision making okay, yeah. so as we stand i think kenya is uh, 23 percent mm -hmm. representation of women in in, mm -hmm. in in the national assembly okay mm -hmm. and you know that we have targets that have been set yeah. uh, that at least according to the Kenyan constitution, that should be 30%, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. um, but then we've even moved beyond the 30%. Mm -hmm. We are now talking of the sustainable development, development goals, goals, which put mm -hmm. the target at 50%. At 50. So, at so the doing, pace that we are, we are moving yeah. as Kenya, <laughs> they are saying we will need 100 to 200 years to reach that. Mm -hmm. So, but we, we, we cannot wait, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. The issue is that uh, we have to experience equality in our generation, yes. right? And um, it's just to give a few examples. So we know Rwanda, mm -hmm. uh, just in the region, Rwanda is, is over 63, I think 63% mm -hmm. women in, in, in decision making. Yeah. Uganda is uh, around 35%, mm -hmm. uh, Ethiopia mm -hmm. 36%, mm -hmm. um, even South Sudan has reached 30% mm -hmm. wow. quota. And somehow right? Kenya is considered the hub of East Africa. That's the thing you see. So we're saying, hey, <laughs> if you want to be a leader, you yeah. better lead in mm -hmm. everything, right? Yes, you can't please. lead on a few mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. then where it really matters mm. um, about uh, in yeah, integration of 50 percent of your population then you, you are doing mm. so badly so it's continuous conversations mm -hmm. that we're having um, mm -hmm. with different leaders at different levels to say mm -hmm. hey we mm -hmm. have to step up mm -hmm. and, um, and 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 ensure that women are there at the mm -hmm. table and you may wonder why is it so important mm -hmm. unlike the issue of gbv where mm -hmm. yeah my rights my bodily integrity mm -hmm. is a matter that's protected by law and if anybody violates it mm -hmm. then yes the law should take its course you may wonder why is it so important mm -hmm. to have women in leadership it's because what i experience as a woman mm -hmm. I should have that experience taken on the table where decisions are going to be made about where the investments of the country are going to go, yeah. uh, about the plans that the country makes mm -hmm. for me, mm -hmm. you know, about um, mm. uh, the, the services that should be available to me. Mm -hmm. So if I'm not there on the table, why should the next gentleman represent my issues as if yeah. I'm not there, yeah. right? Yeah. So there are so many issues that women want to be taken on the decision table. Issues to do with girls' yeah. education, mm -hmm. access to clean water, mm -hmm. diarrheal diseases and That's nutrition, so um, so everything you can think of, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so you want those lived realities to form the decisions that are made about you know the governance of the country so that's why it's very important to have women on the table yeah. right so that's mm -hmm. the second issue women's leadership mm -hmm. the third issue uh, that we have seen where women are you know behind mm -hmm. in kenya is the issue of uh, economic empowerment mm -hmm. so we know that even as we strive for gender equality 
Mm. Opportunities are not the same for men as they are for women. Mm. Yes. Um, so we, I can just summarize it and say poverty is a female face mm. in this country and in many mm. other countries. Yeah. And the factors are many, mm. you know. So, Interesting. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Why well, you have mm -hmm. said so many things, um, <laughs> so many issues. Mm -hmm. We've talked to the leadership issue, mm -hmm. economic empowerment, yes. gender-based violence. Yes. What else did I miss? <laughs> there are so many problems we have. Yes, but I yes. I could in... also just mm -hmm. add maybe because we mm -hmm. are talking of COVID right now. Yeah. Uh, when we talk of economic empowerment, mm. we did a survey. Mm. Uh, this survey was also done in many other countries in in Africa, mm. and it did show that it was mainly mm. the livelihoods and mm. small businesses and jobs that are occupied by women that were the worst hit by the COVID, COVID uh, restrictions. Right. Yes. So. Uh, you know, women operate in small spaces and whenever, you know, a shock comes, it is those jobs those that, jobs that uh, and it is those businesses that face the, the biggest shock and then they crumble, oh, no. right? So then it migrated so many women who were maybe just near or above the, uh, mm. the poverty line, mm. migrated them totally mm. into, poverty, into poverty, right? So yeah. that, that's why we're saying poverty is a female face. Yeah. Even the, in, the, in the workplace environment, mm -hmm. when companies were making decisions about downsizing, mm -hmm. they started by downsizing they, the... They started by downsizing the women who, yeah. I mean, so the, the positions mm -hmm. that are least secure and who mm -hmm. occupies those women. is the women. And that's not the end of it. The young women have also been telling us mm. sexual harassment in the world of work. Mm. That um, So we've also seen an increase in sexual harassment. Mm -hmm. That if you want to maintain your job, that it's not affected by the, mm -hmm. by the, the, the downsizing, you mm -hmm. must give in to sex, you must give in to this favor and so on. Mm -hmm. So even in the time of suffering mm. like that, BV still has a way of finding mm -hmm. itself. Yeah. Yeah? It's yeah. part of the package that women must bear with. So I think mm. all of those are issues. And then the issue, of course, of um, teenage pregnancy. Yes. I think it's one issue that is also standing out. The data is still out there. I think the jury is still out there on the actual figures. But we know just day to day, I think you know of so mm -hmm. many girls. Yeah. I know of so mm -hmm. many girls yes, uh, that mm -hmm. will not be able to go back to school mm -hmm. um, because they they got it's pregnant. Yeah. yeah, Especially in you, villages. My village, exactly. I would say. Yes, yes. And it's, <laughs> it's the same problem. situation yeah. also for me mm. back home. I know so mm. many young girls who will not be able to go back to school. Mm. And globally, they say 47 million girls mm -hmm. are at risk of not being able to go back to school because of the COVID-19 uh, yeah. closures. You know, because of teenage, teenage pregnancy, pregnancy and child marriage, age, mm -hmm. and so many things that just caused them to drop out of school. Yeah. yeah. And that's why I see why, again, leadership, well, more women in leadership mm -hmm. would be a good idea. Yes towards achieving sustainable development because Absolutely. these issues no other man will go and table them more passionately and more With you know you can't get the sound because you're living the issues because you're living every, the issue day. every day exactly. so again it's also a challenge to people who are watching the show today mm -hmm. and also to women around mm -hmm. the world mm -hmm. that there's a lot we still have to do you know Absolutely. <laughs> a lot of, a lot Absolutely. of courses we need to be able to do women like me who stand for women empowerment mm -hmm. i guess it has to broaden. You have to broaden yes. the scope, the issues yes. we talk about, yes. the issues we address, yes. and all that. Yes, 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 yes. Absolutely, wow. I couldn't okay. agree with you more. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So then, I I want to get into the interesting stuff about women who want to get into development and diplomacy. Mm -hmm. Young women. Um, so many of them want to be diplomats so let me just call them i don't know program managers mm -hmm. and things like that mm -hmm. but then how do they start and how do they go about it how would you advise them to go about their careers mm -hmm. um that's an interesting question mm -hmm. and, and quite um, broader question yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i know so mm -hmm. i think um mm -hmm. i would say and unfortunately you know, you know for, for me, me this is not even uh advice, advice that, that was, was there, there. For, for me, so I'm glad that, that I get an opportunity to also share it with others that are coming up. up. Um, I kind of fumbled my way through and mm -hmm. then, well, uh, yeah, yeah, things happened. Yeah. Um, so I would say that they need, you know, to be clear, of course, about what they want, the field of study. So you get um, young women who are hopping from one place to another. Mm -hmm. So while that is good in that it opens up, uh, your understanding of many diverse issues, mm -hmm. but it also, on the flip side of it, it doesn't give you enough depth mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. in terms of an area that you really want to grow into, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So yes, it's good to explore uh, different areas of work, mm -hmm. but I think ultimately you need to mm -hmm. settle down on an area where mm -hmm. you think your passion mm -hmm. is. So, so it's, it's, it's also, also not just about pursuing a job, mm -hmm. it's about having mm -hmm. a drive, the passion. Mm -hmm. So that even when the conditions are, are not conducive, mm -hmm. For you, your drive is enough to sustain your interest that's in that true. area, <laughs> right? That's yes, so that's one. And, and then, then two, two mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, finding, finding a mentor, mentor is very, very useful, helpful. Mm -hmm. It will make a difference. Mm -hmm. so, so find, find yourself, yourself a mentor who is in the line of work that you want to be, and then learn from them. Find time to discuss with them, hey, this is where I am, this is where I want to go, um, and this is where I think I need help. And I feel so, like it saves a lot of energy, time, trying to learn again, trying to, you know, somebody else will give you the experience absolutely. and direct your way. It saves absolutely. you a lot of absolutely. energy. Absolutely. So you, you, yeah. you avoid a lot of, but I'm not also saying that then mm -hmm. it will be a, a, a cookie cutter kind of mm -hmm. solution, no? Mm -hmm. But then you are more aware of, you know, how to be deliberate about the, the, your mm -hmm. career and the, the, the progress you want to make and the direction you want to take. And it also helps you avoid some pitfalls that, for mm -hmm. example, I learned along yeah, the way yeah, yeah. and I want to make sure as you are learning, yes, you may make your own mistakes, but mm -hmm. at least you know what to expect and mm -hmm. you know how to get around that. Okay. You know, so find a mentor, yeah. but also uh, the passion that we spoke about already, that one, no one will take it away from you. Mm -hmm. And then I would also say um, read up a lot, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. it's good to, to be well read. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, as a diplomat, mm -hmm. you cannot, you know, just wing your way out of situations. Yeah. You have to be read. Mm -hmm. You have to have a, a very a mm -hmm. strong sense of analysis mm -hmm. so that when people engage with mm -hmm. you, they see the substance in you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You're not just giving, you know, um, on the surface answers, mm -hmm. but you That's show true. the depth. Yeah. And you show interest, you know a wide range of issues, mm -hmm. you are well read, you can engage yeah. on different topics. For example, mm -hmm. I'm not um, a, a fan of uh, sports, especially <laughs> soccer. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. No, I'm not. <laughs> Somehow my mother is. I oh, don't yeah? know how. Oh, wow. Good for her. Yeah. Good for her. Yeah. So, but what I do mm -hmm. is just to learn enough mm -hmm. so that, you know, if I'm seated at the table mm -hmm. with diplomats and that's what they are talking Talk about, about, I can yeah, engage. Can I don't feel to totally left out, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And um, also, of course, knowing current affairs, mm -hmm. I know. Um, um, People mm -hmm. now mistake sometimes the amount of time you spend on social media mm -hmm. is being, you know, current, uh, reading current affairs. But yes, yeah, so yeah. that has its place, but mm -hmm. there is also place for in-depth learning, right? Mm -hmm. um, reading up mm -hmm. on other people's experiences, mm -hmm. you know, read up on biographies. Mm -hmm. uh, I've read so many biographies. I've learned from powerful women, yeah. both from our continent and mm -hmm. also from other countries, right? Mm -hmm. So you learn all the mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. right? You learn, you improve, you learn also how to, to engage mm -hmm. and so on. So there is a lot that you can do. Mm -hmm. um, Actually, the thing you've said about social media being mm -hmm. a space where people believe Oh, current affairs. I saw a tweet about it. I know mm -hmm. what's happening. But mm -hmm. there's a difference mm -hmm. when now you go and watch television and uh -huh. the news uh -huh. and you hear how people have a dialogue around what that uh -huh. news is about, uh -huh. what the breaking news is about, what yes. challenges around it. And yes. you know, there's a lot. You yes. hear and you can be able to yes. engage. And yes, you, yes. You, you listen to the yeah. analysis. Mm -hmm. So the tweet mm -hmm. can point you to where the story is. Mm -hmm. But that's not the story mm -hmm. itself. So then go mm -hmm. and, you know, immerse yourself, get to know a bit more, listen to other experts analyzing. Mm -hmm. Then you improve your own, you know, mm -hmm. uh, understanding, but also ability mm -hmm. to in interact with issues mm -hmm. and then, you know, um, engage um, mm -hmm. uh, constructively with others. So yeah. there is a lot. Is a and lot. I, 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 I just know that there is a lot more mm -hmm. information that's available now for young professionals mm -hmm. um, than when we were growing up, mm -hmm. you know. Um, That's true. Yeah, mm -hmm. so then you make the most out of all of those tools that are available mm -hmm. today, you mm -hmm. know, to just continuously improve. Mm -hmm. Like I said, never stop learning because life never stops teaching, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so continuously feed, like feed your brain, feed, feed your soul. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't also finish this, this mm -hmm. question without acknowledging the role that my faith mm -hmm. is played in all of this yeah. because it, it stabilizes me. Mm -hmm. Every day I commit every day mm -hmm. to god yeah. to say god 
what belongs to me is this one that the child is yours, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, wow, and wow, this privilege wow. that you have mm -hmm. given me to lead, to serve, um, so give me the wisdom mm -hmm. that I should then, you know, bring to the workplace because I'm in charge of men and women who are leaders mm -hmm. in their own spaces. Mm -hmm. So what I need, therefore, to be an effective leader mm -hmm. is the wisdom, yeah. right? So yeah. I commit every day, yeah. every challenge, mm -hmm. every situation to God. And right. it has yeah. a way that it just gives me confidence that I'm not alone. Mm. And yeah. somehow it has helped you also to lead well. I must say, when I arrived here, your colleague was busy saying how she's very lovely. A very oh, lovely leader. Okay. <laughs> All the compliments have come. Even oh, before okay. from the previous conversation. Oh, really? As I was trying to set up this meeting. Oh, really? All the words I had were just good. Oh. So I guess God has been faithful oh, okay. also. okay. Thank you for telling me that prayer. because no one tells me that. <laughs> no one tells you that. <laughs> no, they don't. <laughs> now but you thank know. you for letting me yeah. know. Yeah, <laughs> okay. So we'll end up with you just telling us the good things you like about your job. So people will know that, you know, um, what they can look up to. I had a problem uh, last year when I had started the show ready, mm. but then I realized that most women are being inspired by women who are out there in America only, and they don't mm. see the good things that are mm. here and the women who are achieving in Africa, mm -hmm. you know. So I want to engage as many more women mm -hmm. and even maybe even bring you back, uh, maybe an, a live conversation where people can have questions, young oh, diplomats, wow. young development uh, leaders. I would really want to do that with you, but mm. just talk about the nice stuff now, the things you like about your job <laughs> and what you do yeah what's there not to like yeah. everything i love it yeah. you know so in my role um which i will correct so i'm not country director anymore okay. i'm actually country representative so that's that's yeah. the international that's level. level uh for no no i had to that's on record <laughs> <laughs> I'm country representative. So what that means yeah. is that um, it's like an ambassador for UN women to Kenya. So, so what, what UN women, women stands for? for I I represent here. Yeah. So I take I, I I'm there to ensure that the interests of UN women are taken to Kenya in that they are taken up by the government of Kenya and the people of Kenya, like yourselves, and that um, the commitments that uh, government of Kenya has made um, globally to say this is what we'll do for women and girls in our country. So when we come here, we say, hey, how about those commitments that you made, right? Um, um, we have a gap in this law. Can we do something to address that gap in the law? Can we do something to improve the implementation of that law? Can we do? Can we improve the quality of services so that women can have better access to health, education, all the services, water, uh, all the things that matter to women? So that's my role. I, I I really like it because it's a very vibrant mandate. You know, it's not some dead mandate that you have to scratch your head about. It's about everyday life for women and girls and that's not a stretch because i live it you live it and see it it's reported every day and when we go to the field we get a chance to talk to men we get a chance to talk to women to boys and girls and that's how live our mandate is so i couldn't do anything that's much more interesting and exciting than living and working uh, through a mandate that i love that i connect with every day i don't need to 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 you know read some 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 theory or read some some do some mathematics around it with due respect it, it's such a live mandate so i love it and then i'm also privileged to lead a very vibrant team uh it's you and women here in kenya so it's made up of a, um, uh, foreigners like myself and also local uh kenyans so there is a fusion there of culture of um, understanding, learning, and so on. So I love it there because every day I'm learning something new. Mm -hmm. I've signed up to learn Swahili. Oh. Yes. <laughs> and because I kind of find when I'm following the news, even the main bulletins, yes. the practice is not to translate mm -hmm. for an audience that doesn't speak mm -hmm. the language. Yeah. So okay. I really want to hear when that woman is speaking. Mm -hmm. I really want to understand what she's saying, okay. right? Yeah. When that man is speaking. So I've, I've signed up to learn Swahili. 
there is, yeah, there is a certain level of soft lending. So part of the things I can get a, the gist of what's being said, but I really need to, to learn to understand without the help of translation all the time. Yes, 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 yes. So there is so much to love and I love all of it. <laughs> yes, yeah. Okay, so we'll end in Kiswahili uh, so that you can live here also. Maybe we'd have made an impact in your life by just you know, yes, yes, you <laughs> a few Kiswahili yes, words, yes, you know. Yes, thank you. Yeah, so yeah. it's to say Asante Sana, um, uh, Santeni Kwa Kuchazama, Women Today Show. Okay, mm -hmm. so I go. Yeah, ahead. yeah. Okay. Uh, Asante Sana mm -hmm. uh, for having me mm -hmm. and to our viewers. Mm -hmm. Asante Kutazama, mm -hmm. uh, Women Today Show. Yeah, thank you. Uh, oh, Asante Ni Kutazama. <laughs> that is still yes. okay. Yeah. Okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> thank okay. you so thank you. much. Thank you. Uh, uh, yeah. I okay. hope this was what you it wanted. Was, it was, it was. Uh, okay. But you know, a conversation about women empowerment never mm. ends. Like, mm. You can't just have one hour and it's enough yeah it's something that has to be very continuous yeah and yeah and know, then maybe and... on other days mm -hmm. on other times mm -hmm. we can because i always want to make sure whatever space we have mm -hmm. okay yes to talk about my experience and inspiring others mm -hmm. but also you know a chance to talk about real issues that people are facing out there mm -hmm. so if they are watching watching women today show yes mm -hmm. let them learn from my experience mm -hmm. uh in terms of leadership and all that but let them also learn something that can help address mm -hmm. maybe a problem yes, that they are yes, experiencing yes, yes, right definitely. i also forgot to mention mm -hmm. uh one of the things that i've consistently been doing mm -hmm. is to really work with young women mm -hmm. and uh, empower them to lead mm -hmm. empower them uh, give them opportunities yes you know so i've i've worked with so many young women mm -hmm. and those that i see that mm -hmm. these ones mm -hmm. are ready mm -hmm. and they have the passion Mm -hmm. and they have the drive yeah you know i've really helped them, Help them. and Help so them. i've left so many young women in higher positions some that came in as volunteers now they are on un contracts and they are going right yeah. um others uh that you know couldn't even have a voice yeah. you know so i would deliberately pick on them and say okay mm -hmm. so today you are the one who is chairing our meeting okay. oh my goodness no 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 how can we yeah but then you know after time they said ah yes Yes, and why? It's because I had, and four people, my, my former boss, uh, from 2005 to 2008, he was American. So he was the country representative for United uh, UNFPA in Zimbabwe. So he's the one who instilled in me something that I've never forgotten. So he told me, uh, because I, you know, I always thought I was not adequate because of my mm -hmm. background so yeah. i always felt that okay how can you go in there and people listen yeah. you know yeah. um uh you mm -hmm. know all of those people they are yeah. so exposed mm -hmm. they are yeah. well traveled mm -hmm. they are what so mm -hmm. i always doubted myself a lot mm -hmm. but he said something to me that was so important he said anna there are seven billion of us out there mm -hmm. and you are one of them so I don't want to hear you ever say that, oh, that job. So there are so many jobs that he wanted me to apply for. And I would say, oh, mm -hmm. I think that's maybe for people who are in New York, you know, yeah. they are better positioned, they are whatever. Mm -hmm. So he said, let those people in New York be afraid of this young, upcoming, uh, 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 passionate, uh, driven young lawyer who is coming up in Africa and who has lived through all of this. Mm -hmm. And they want their fair share on the voice, on the table when things are being discussed right they want to hear from you because you have lived that experience right so it really made me uh, realize that okay I am a global citizen and global citizenry is made up of so many people mm -hmm. and if I don't let my experience count mm -hmm. who is going to make it count right yeah. so it just really enriched me empowered okay. me mm -hmm. and I I never got fearful mm. of situations anymore. anymore. So I would go in there feeling, okay, of the 7 billion that are out there, I'm one of them and this is my time now, you know? <laughs> so it just gave me so much confidence. Yeah. I also, I don't know, I 
know, people look at the things that I try to do in front mm. of camera and looks mm. like I'm very okay and I'm very sure what I do. Okay. But I doubt myself even even before this interview, I doubt it oh, myself. You mean, you mean from the other side <laughs> yes, also? <laughs> I doubt so myself. A whole every, party of doubt here. Yeah. <laughs> every day, but I consciously tell myself yeah. that yes, you're you are in the right you place. Can see exactly. It. And you are meant yeah. you are exactly yeah. where you are yeah. meant to be. Yeah. So that's what I also also teach. Uh, I mean teach not teach, but um share with young women who are busy doubting themselves that you are in the right place so you know don't be afraid to use your voice stand up and be heard even when your knees are shaking yeah stand up and be heard <laughs> so many times uh on the platforms that i'm made to sit okay now not so much but yeah as i was coming up i mean as i was um um uh, yes yes so there were times that i would say you know, like uh, I'm quaking like down here, there would be an entire earthquake, but I would steal myself to say, <laughs> I would steal myself to say, Anna, no, they need to hear what you have to say. And so say it. So I would take in my breath and then say it. Yeah. And then oh, it wasn't so bad. Yeah. Now, so now you put me in any room, you know, I'll find my voice. Yeah. You know, yeah. Sometimes I just get a bit camera shy. My, yeah. my, my colleagues know that. But I, again, I'm, yes, 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 yes. Thank you. Thank you. So I think that's, that's something young people also need to know. Uh, it doesn't matter how you start. It's about how you finish your journey. In fact, how you start should, if it doesn't break you, it will make you strong. So I think for me, I didn't allow it to break me. I, I wanted to learn from it to become a, the, the strong woman, uh, hopefully, that I am today. Yeah. Mm, mm. Yeah, yeah. So thank you for having me. And uh, yeah, uh, it's whenever you want, maybe not whenever, but we can. <laughs> yeah, because I know you're very, very yes, busy. In yes, fact, yes, I, yes. Yeah, but I will, I will let Tabitha Tabi know, know and all, yeah, so that if you're available, mm -hmm. you can make time. Mm -hmm. Also, I was trying to tell her as well, if there are women who are in your space who are all about empowerment and you know they would not mind being on the show okay. and empowering others okay it i would appreciate you know okay. uh, maybe just letting them know that they are welcome to the ah, show i can brilliant. continue with the so conversation we'll through that right yeah we'll make a few just so i can certainly. continue with the dialogue you know sometimes it's the times that i can't all the women are willing it's just they don't have the time but mm -hmm. i just keep trying to push and see whoever sure. will be available sure and sure. i would like to keep the content going forward yeah. you know yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, no, we'll do that. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that. So, yeah. thank you for having thank me. You. So, so, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you for having both your eyes and ears glued to the show. Uh, it's been great and a great conversation. A special thank you to the production team Bonte Media, Mesh Guru. Uh, Edwin, aka All Day. Uh, thank you all so much for supporting the show. And for you, our viewers, if this conversation has been helpful to you. Please remember to subscribe and kindly share with a friend or a friend or a friend who might need this. And I look forward to seeing you again in the next week's episode. And for now, bye-bye. <laughs>